many intelligent, studious, and sincere ones within Judaism love to ask the great question, why? Why was Jesus not named, literally, Emmanuel within the New Testament, but rather given the name, literally, as Jesus or Iusus or his first century Hebrew name, Yeshua or Yehoshua, as the prophecy in Yeshiyahu chapter 7 and verse 14 states at the end, it says, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, that is a great question in which I am honored to give an answer within this playlist video teaching. Now, first and foremost, it is important to see that the Mashiach, the Messiah, is given a number of different names within the prophecies of the Tanakh, within the prophets, even within the prophets themselves which are not to be taken too literally, which are better understood as titles by the fruits. In other words, also by the fruits is how you shall know him. For example, let me just give you an example. Just two chapters later in chapter 9 of Yeshiyahu, Isaiah, beginning in verse 5 or 6, depending on whether you have a Christian Bible, or the Tanakh that's translated into English by, you know, Jewish, within Judish, Judaism translators. Here it says, beginning in verse 5 or 6, it says, For a child is born unto us, a son is given to us. And notice it's not referring to the Father here or the Ancient of Days, the holy name, the yud Hey vav Hey, but he says dominion. What does that mean? Dominion shall rest on his shoulders. And he will be given the name. The name, Shem, Hashem, will be given the name. And notice that not just one here, Pile Yoet, Yoyetz, Pile, Pile Yoyetz, which can mean wonder of a counselor or wonderful counselor, as your translation might say. Also a name, El Gibor, which means almighty, almighty God, if I may use that title, El Gibor. Aviad, which means father of eternity. Now, there's even Jewish males in our modern times named Aviad, and we don't take that too literally, uh, such as Aviad Cohen. You can Google search that or on YouTube search his song that he wrote, uh, Hooked on the Truth. Yeah, man, Hooked on the Truth. And he wrote a song of his testimony, and he has a number of songs on there, which, which I surely appreciate. Regardless, Aviad. Father of Eternity. Also, Sar Shalom, which means Prince of Peace. And that could be translated in slightly different synonymous ways, of course. Sar Shalom. Continuing in the next verse, uh, 6 or 7, depending on your scriptures, it says, In order to extend the dominion and perpetuate the peace of the throne and kingdom of David. Here we have Mashiach David, of ben, ben David, the concept coming into here. We see the Davidic covenant, as it's also stated elsewhere in more detail. But not to get off on too much of a tangent here, let me continue. To secure it and sustain it through justice, talking about the kingdom, the dominion, Justice and righteousness henceforth and forever. A long time. Forever is a long time. The zeal of Adonai Tzvayot, 
or the holy name, of course, Zaviot, which means like the yud he vav he of hosts, another title here, he will accomplish this. And I believe that's referring to the Father himself will accomplish this through a special child, a son that will be given to us. So here we can see that the Father, Avina Makinu, shares his name, his title, with this child, with this son. Kind of like a junior. You know, we have like Sammy Davis Jr., and Sammy Davis Jr., I assume his father's name was Sammy Davis. They have the same name, but they're not the same person. And so we can see that father and son can share the same name, but they're not exactly the same person. But, of course, the intent is to be one, just as you and I are to become one, a chad, as a, as a body of faith and and worship of of Hashem and uh, wow uh, let's let's look over at Yirmiyahu Yer, that's Jeremiah twenty three verses five and six it says the days are coming says the Most High that holy name when I the Father will raise a righteous branch with a capital B here I put and a lot of translators do a branch of David another hint here Mashiach ben David he will reign as king and succeed <clears throat> sometimes he doesn't move as fast as we want him to but he still does his his work in due time it says he will succeed he will do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Yehuda, or Judah, will be saved. Israel, Yisrael, will live in safety. And the name, here, Hashem, the name will be given to him, will be Adonai, the Holy One, Zedkinu, which means could mean the yud he vav he, our righteousness. Now again, continuing a couple chapters, a few chapters later, ten chapters later, in chapter 33 of Yirmiyahu, that's Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16, it says here, Here, the days are coming, says the Most High, when I will fulfill this good promise which I have proclaimed for the house of Israel, Israel, and the house of Yehuda. Of course, at that time there were two kingdoms separated, the Judah down south and the ten tribes up north, referred to as Israel, eventually being brought back together as one, of course. Now, verse 15, it says, When those days come, at that time I will cause to spring up for David a branch of righteousness. He will do what is just and right in the land. When those days come, Yehuda will be saved. The ultimate fulfillment. Yerushalayim will live in safety. And the name Hashem given to him will be that holy name again. Zidkinu means the yud vav our righteousness. So here he's sharing it with this branch, his name, even his holy name. Now, notice, I'll, I'll move on to the Brit Hadashah writings here, a.k.a. New Testament, to see the compliance and understanding of this in more unity and magnification. Notice in the book of Luke, it says, 
Luke chapter 1, verses 34 and 35, referring to the name, it says here, Then Miriam, or Mary, as, your trans as some of your translations might say, said to the angel, How can this be? For, since I do not know a man. Now, it's referring to her virginity. She already knew and was betrothed to Joseph, Yosef, very well at that time. You can read that in the context. Just like when Adam knew Eve, all of a sudden a baby comes out pretty soon. It's some discreet uh, terminology for what the kids and the teens out there don't need to hear in more detail, of course. So continue on in verse 35, it says, And the angel answered and said to her, The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One, HaElyon, who is to be born, will be called or named uh, it's very interchangeable in the Greek. The Greek word is kaleo, Strong's Concordance number 2564. That's 2564 in the Greek. His name shall be called, or he will be called or named, the Son of God. Here. Now, same Greek word used twice within the same chapter of the book of Acts. Many other places too, but two times in the book of Acts to show how interchangeable this is in verse 1 here, Acts chapter 10 verse 1. It says, And there was a certain man in Caesarea, Caesarea called or named, same Greek word, kaleo, Carnelius. He was a Gentile convert. Carnelius, a centurion of what was called, again the same Greek word, Calio, the Italian regiment. Now, he wasn't literally named the Italian regiment, but he was, he was named Carnelius. So we see the same Greek word used twice in the same verse, just to kind of show it's a little ambiguous. And notice what Yeshua is quoted himself saying in the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 12. 3 verse 12, it says, quoting Yeshua, Yehoshua, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, my Elohim, the holy name here, his God. And he will go out no more, and I will write on him the name Hashem of my God. Even Yeshua says of my God. And the name of the city of my God. The new Yerushalayim, which comes down from heaven from my God. Here, still quoting him. And I will write on him my new name. Another name here. Wow. Okay. Now, Yeshua is also quoted. Let me give you a couple more. Hopefully you're not offended and still listening here. And in the book of Yochanan, in John, chapter 14 and verse 10, it says, The words that I speak, quoting Yeshua here, The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, or on my own, but the Father... The Father, Abba, who dwells in me, does the works. Verse 24 of, of chapter 14 here, it says, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine. It's not his, Yeshua's, but the Father's who sent me, who sent him. Verse 28, in case it's not clear enough yet. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I've said, I am going to the Father, for 
My father is greater than I. Even he says the father is greater than him. And when you go to Daniel, the prophecy of the son of man, you see the Ancient of Days giving this dominion to the Son of Man. And uh, the Ancient of Days is not the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the Mashiach. He's not the Ancient of Days very clearly. I think that's um, Daniel chapter 9. Could be 7. But anyway, not in my notes here. Don't want to get off on a tangent. Let me continue. Nevertheless, the Hebrew and Greek words for name and called are interchangeable. A little in there synonymous. They can be synonymous. So therefore it becomes a little bit more ambiguous than we would like. Not literal names only, not just literal names. It can be literal names. At times it is and sometimes it's not. As you know, it's not always a full-time personal name or only a name or just it can be a nickname or a part-time name or simply just a meaningful idol. Therefore, there's, there's no need to, um, for Yeshua to only be named Emmanuel, literally, throughout the New Covenant writings. Or to be called Emmanuel because Emmanuel can be a literal name sometimes. And we have Emmanuel, even, even males today are called Emmanuel or Manny for short. Hey, Manny. I've known Manny's whose real name was Emmanuel. And so there can be nicknames or, or also other names. We have middle names, last names, and, and to distinguish and identify people a little bit better. Or a name can simply be a title or a statement meaning, Emmanuel in this case, meaning God is with us. He is with us. And notice how we can see this. I'm not just making this up. Please check up on me here in Yeshayahu. That's Isaiah chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. It says here, and I quote, Now Adonai, quoting from the complete Jewish Bible, Now Adonai will bring upon them the mighty floodwaters of the river, apparently the Euphrates, River, that is the king of Ashur and his power. It, referring to this king and the power, and this, it says, it will sweep through Yehuda, Judah, flooding everything and passing on. It will reach even up to the neck and its outspread wings will fill the whole expanse of the land. O Emmanuel, or O God is with us. So even though he allows terrible things to happen to his, to his people, he is still with his people. And, and that's how I see this as, as a very Peshat, simple text, that he is with us. I don't see it very explicit referring to a person, a human, or this child literally being born. Always. It's not limited to that. Let me put it that way respectfully. And if you can prove otherwise, please post a, a comment or question or evidence on this video teaching. But getting up, moving on, it's kind of like the name Melchizedek. Melchizedek however you'd like to pronounce that, was not intended to remain a literal name of the high priest Melchizedek, as we see in the Torah. In the Torah, it's uh, but more of a priesthood title that can be transferred to other names. Uh, it, it simply means king of Salem or priest of El Elyon, God Most High, the Most High such as Shem, and even in Judaism refers to Melchizedek, which Abraham paid tithes to, was most likely Shem, the son of Noah, one of the three sons that survived the flood. And you look at the timeline, he lived past the, after Abraham died, 
in, in at 175, I believe, if my memory's right. Shem, you add up his number of years, he lived past that. So it's very feasible and possible that the Melchizedek, that Shem, that Abraham, Avraham, was was giving tithes to could have been Shem, the survivor of the flood. And of course, carrying on and, and carrying a title of representing the Most High. In other words, it could be dual, you know, as even, even Moshe. It says that you will be, you will be me, you'll represent me, you'll be Elohim, and Aaron will be your prophet. I can't remember exactly what chapter, uh, Exodus, uh, Shemot, chapter, is that chapter 6 or somewhere in there? Anyway, not, not in my notes here, and not memorized, so please forgive me, but I think you know you can search for that, or if you can't find it, send me a comment, and I'll gladly quote it later. But therefore, moving on, moving on respectfully here, such can be likewise as we see Melchizedek with Emmanuel, that the, uh, the Most High is with us. A simple title with, with real meaning behind it, which explains why Yeshua, that his first century name, Yah, Yahshua, means God is salvation. He is salvation. And so, bringing, and I have a video teaching the stone of Israel. Stone, you break that Hebrew word, three letters up, you have father and son, the savior. The stone, the rock of Israel can also be a father-son combination here, not just one without the other. So anyway, this explains why Yeshua was never in the gospels referred to as the primary name or literal name of Emmanuel. The literal name, I repeat, not the literal name, Emmanuel, which means the Most High is with us.